We are now going to apply the decision-making process you just heard and read about. Most people are able to apply this process instinctively. However, in this case, we are asking you to be aware of which element you are going through. Let's go to Vail, Oregon and talk to Al Crouch. Al is a fire operations specialist on the Vail BLM district. He has developed a case study and exercise from the Irish Springs fire. Listen carefully while Al takes you to a point in the incident that will require some decision making. Throughout this module, be sure you are applying the processes of the decision making model. This exercise will require you to build your essay, recognize problems or changes in the environment, and select the options that reflect the most likely outcome. Before we examine the Irish Springs fire, it's important that we recognize the overall situation leading up to the events on August 10, and see what elements may or may not have had an impact on operations that day. Over the winter and throughout the spring, the Vail District received an above normal amount of rainfall. The timing of these moisture events allowed for above normal fuel loads of annual and perennial grasses. And when June came, the rain stopped. These grasses cured quickly and earlier than normal. Combined with a heavy grass load and dead component from the previous year, cured and dead grass was continuous throughout most of the district and heavy in many areas. Historically, the district's 90th percentile fires occur within a four to five week period at the end of July and early August. This is typically a time when dry lightning storms combined with low daytime humidities and poor nighttime humidity recovery is common. 2006 was no exception. In the days leading up to the Irish Springs fire, the Vail District was busy with initial attack. Two Type 4 fires were staffed on August 9th caused by a significant lightning event. And on August 10th, before the Irish Springs fire was reported, dispatch was busy supporting the Murray and South Fork fires. One new fire was staffed in the Baker Resource Area, and fire crews were dispatched to two false alarms. More lightning was forecasted for the district. Local fire crews have been going hard since the third week of June with little to no break. The district was already experiencing an above normal amount of fires with above normal acreage burned. The weather on August 10th was shaping up to be just like any other hot summer day in the high desert of eastern Oregon. Roughly 20 miles north of Gentura lies the Castle Rock area within the Malheur Resource Area. This area of the district is known for its scenic, cultural, historical, and wildlife values. Forest stands within this area are variable, ranging from open ponderosa pine stands to dense Douglas fir stands. Most of these stands suffer from insect and disease-related tree mortality. Historically, wildfire acted as a natural thinning agent here, but the removal of fire has resulted in accumulations of large quantities of woody fuel, some greater than 30 tons per acre. This fuel, much of which is ladder fuel, is comprised both of dense understory vegetation and deep duff layers. Fuels such as juniper and mountain mahogany mixed with mountain sagebrush and grass typically surround these stands. The potential for high intensity, uncontrollable stand replacement type fires is high. The morning fire weather forecast on August 10, 2006 for Vail BLM was as follows. Mostly sunny in the morning, becoming partly cloudy in the afternoon. Maximum temperatures 83 to 93 degrees. Minimum relative humidity 10 to 20 percent. Winds in the morning light upslope less than 8 miles per hour, then becoming south 8 to 12 in the afternoon with gusts possible to 25 miles per hour. Haynes index 6 high and a lightning activity level of 1 low.
back roads uh, on the south side of it, and then uh, the main uh, Castle Rock Guard Station Road is uh, on the east side of it, above it, uh, approximately uh, 600 yards. Um, there's some pretty good access roads getting into here uh, with an engine um, from that Castle Guard, uh, or Castle Rock Guard Station Road. I think the engines will be able to get fairly close to the fire. Um, would you like us to take action on the fire at this time, just that?
uh, crowning and torching and at uh, different times when it builds up enough heat. And uh, right now we're going to keep the retards coming at it and the helicopters are doing a good job uh, working with the crews. Still not much wind on it, still not much difference in acreage. Copy that. Um, it's still go for getting Boise's air attack over in about an hour or so. I think we're going to have this thing whipped uh, unless these guys on the ground want to somebody to circle it. Uh, I don't know how many more people you got coming to this thing, but, uh, you know, for an aerial show, I think uh, you could probably just have the helicopters in another hour. Copy that. Dispatch, Chris. Get into your groups to compare and develop your collective situation awareness. Be sure the group analyzes the situation utilizing the five processes. Your goal is to make a decision. This should take no more than 15 minutes. Your facilitator will then select someone from your group to turn your decision into action. This will be accomplished in the form of instructions to your crew or the class in this case. You may find the risk management process on page one of the Incident Response Pocket Guide to be a useful decision-making tool.